the Jungar Basin Wing, a pterosaur from the early Cretaceous China. This is the Sungaripterus. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dinosaur Channel. This is your home on the internet for all things dinosaur and prehistoric. I'm your host Tall, and today we're going to be talking about the ancient flying lizard, the Sungaripterus. But before we jump into everything about the Sungaripterus, I want to remind you guys to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a single dinosaur prehistoric quick dive that we do in the future. We are covering every single animal in the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park franchise, including animals in Jurassic World Dominion, so you don't want to miss any of this. As well, leave us a dinosaur-sized thumbs up and comment down below a dinosaur prehistoric creature you would like to see us cover in the future. You can also become a member of this channel by hitting that join button. It will go a long way to supporting us and you'll unlock cool icons and emojis you can use when interacting with us. With all that mumbo jumbo being said, let's jump into a quick dive on the Sungaripterus. So what does Sungaripterus mean? Well, first of all, how do you pronounce its freaking name? Because why does it have a D there? It's so confusing. Well, apparently there are two ways to say Sungaripterus, where the D is silent or Jungaripterus with a J. I don't know, I'll probably use both pronunciations through this video, but I feel more comfortable just saying Sungaripterus. Okay, so the Sungaripterus means Jungar Basin Wing. It is a reference to the place where this creature was first discovered, and the Latinicized Greek word Teron, which means wing. The Sungaripterus was named in 1964 by a paleontologist and zoologist Yang Zhoujian, or CC Young in scientific circles. So where and when did the Sungaripterus live? Well, this flying reptile lived in the early Cretaceous period around 145 to 100.5 million years ago in what is now Asia and Africa. Sungaripterus fossils were first discovered in the 1960s in the northwestern part of China in the Jungar Basin of Xijiang, near the border of Kazakhstan and Mongolia. So what did the Sungaripterus actually look like? Okay, so the Sungaripterus was a winged reptile. It wasn't a dinosaur, but a pterosaur. It was an ancient flying lizard with wide leathery wings and a wingspan of up to 11 and a half feet or 3.5 meters. This this creature had a short torso and was approximately 4 feet or 1.2 meters tall, and its long narrow skull and curved neck had a combined length of about 3.3 feet or 1 meter. It had a bony crest that went down from the base of the skull to halfway to the beak. Now, the most prominent feature of the Sungaripterus were long, narrow pointed jaws that curved upward. It was toothless in the front, but also had a flat teeth in the back of the jaws. So how did the Sungaripterus actually get famous? And was it ever actually famous at all? Well, not exactly. The Sungaripterus was not really in popular culture, unlike say the pterodactyl or pteranodon which have become household names referring to any type of flying reptile or pterosaur. Anyways, the Sungaripterus did appear in the movie Dino King 3D, Journey to Fire Mountain, and in the Jurassic Universe this flying lizard appeared in the video games Jurassic World Alive, Jurassic World The Game, and Jurassic World Evolution 2 in the new pterosaur exhibits and pterosaur species. And while it was not featured in the new movie Jurassic World Dominion at all, Mattel released a Sungaripterus action figure called the Jurassic World Furious Pack Sungaripterus. It was one of the creatures in included in the toy line in which Mattel described to be inspired by the Dominion movie. Now let's dig into this winged reptile's diet and behavior. Well, the Sungaripterus was a specialized molluscivore, meaning it primarily ate mollusks. Based on the adaptations of its body, this animal most probably fed on mollusks like clams, mussels, snails, and possibly shellfish available during its time. Its upward pointing beak was useful in prying up shells from rocks and sandy, muddy beaches, kind of like a crowbar. And its teeth towards the back of the jaw were blunt. Not much use in holding onto wriggling fish, but very useful for cracking open shells. The Sungaripterus robust skeleton and stouty bodily proportions suggest that this reptile lived mostly on land. You know, it probably spent its time picking clams by the beach. Now, was this animal aggressive? Was it territorial? Well, we don't really know that. There's not much scientific information available about this winged lizard. But this is a beautiful example of another sort of specialized pterosaur. We see specialization across the Mesozoic world, whether it's in dinosaurs, marine reptiles, or flying reptiles like the Sungaripterus. And having this crazy looking beak and this crazy crest showing you just a glimpse of what this animal might have specialized in when it was living in its life also shows you why this animal probably went extinct so easily when the end of the Mesozoic era came to its fruition. Nonetheless, a very cool animal and that my friends is the Sungaripterus. If you did like this episode, please leave us a dinosaur sized thumbs up and comment down below a dinosaur prehistoric creature you would like to see us cover in the future. Also subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a single video because we're covering every single animal and prehistoric creature in the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park franchise. You can also donate to this channel by hitting that PayPal link down below in the description or joining and becoming a member of the channel where you can unlock cool icons and emojis that you can use when interacting with the Dinosaur Channel in the future. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye!